quick summary before the vid starts. At the very end of the vid, I'm going to do a tackle talk. I'm also going to sort of talk about where I went and why I went there. Hang in there, enjoy the vid, and I'll see you guys at the very end. Well, here we go. Again, last time I was here, we had to leave early, but we're back. Ash is back here again with us, and partner Swanee. Swanee hasn't been here for a very, very long time. His biggest would be, what, 60 centimeters-ish? So we're going to try and beat that today or tomorrow. We're here for two days. Um, conditions aren't looking very good. No one who I've spoken to reports a shocking fish aren't biting. If they are, they're small. Our plan, go up, go wide, go far. Try and find spots that haven't really been hit before. Big plastics and um, something a bit different. Let's see how we go. Alrighty, so you guys get the back cam. We haven't had a cast yet. We have seen, what do you reckon, about seven, eight barra maybe come yeah. through? It's been about, we've only been here for about two minutes. We're all rigged up. Swanee has the um, Thready Buster on. Ash has a new yellow jackal squirrel color. And I have a black and gold, just to start off with. Just to start, and then we'll start changing up a bit. Some bigger plastics, small plastics, just see. It's good to get on the board, but yeah, we've got some out here to the left as well, so. Let's give it a red hot nudge. Let's go. Alrighty, guys. Cast. Oh. I think I'm board. All right. You guys ready? Yep. Take it away. Ooh. Good cast. Thank you. Alright. I'm gonna get this a bit more over here, so I need to So just slow winds again. Yeah, a bit of a pull to get down so you feel the vibration and stop. You know, you know where the snaggy is? I think it's very snaggy here, right? Yeah. We got the big chook. <laughs> big chooky. Mr. Reedy's. This is one that should have caught us the barra. Oh, look at the fish. Oh, wait, I want to see how I swam. Mate, this is such a good little. <laughs> I've got to hit them. Oh. <gasps> Wait, I'm on. Hold on. Come on, close one. Hold it. Like, put it down. This is the, um, that's that bloody. Wait for a minute. Wait. Oh. That's the, um, what do you call it? Ready Buster. You said you got a feeling for it today. Oh mate, oh, it's not too big, that's big enough. Um, is it under there or? No, oh, it's not too big, boys. Doesn't matter. Jeez, it hit and felt much, much bigger. Don't worry about that. Oh yeah, it's under there, Swain. Oh. Yeah. How's the three buster? Mm -hmm. 
He's only just hooked, so I'm just going to back that drag off a little bit. And um, I'll let you know, Swanny. Um, yeah, yeah, give yeah, Yep, go, scoop go. it, scoop it. Hang on, Swanny. Head first, mate. Always head first. Okay. There it is. Yeah. Oh. What are you talking about? That's not a big one. It's not too bad. <laughs> You're I mean, joking. It's, it's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes. On the Thready Buster Lure. That action of that lure is insane, hey? Well, we've been trying a lot of lures and that one has worked. Excellent. It's actually bigger than normal. I'd say about 65, maybe 70. I reckon 70. Nice looking fish, fought pretty hard. I actually didn't even know I hooked it, to be honest. So that's the first one in and it's 16 past 12. Just seen some fish coming through on the sounder way up the back here. So that's actually a good result. Look at the size of that one. Man, there's just like schools of barrow this size coming through. It's great. Well, I got my line worked out. And if this line's working, we're all switching. Come on this side, Ash. Rotate with me. Send it down there. Or should I send it down the other direction and bring it no. in? Yep. This one's not as big swing, so we'll be aggressive with the net here. What did you just say? That's the thready buster again. You know, what do you say? You wait like so long to catch the fish that you want to enjoy the actual moment of fishing rather than getting it in the net. Look under the, like, look on the sound up and look at that fish, Ash. Yeah, I know. Put the camera over there and look at the sound and zoom in on that. Oh, yes, the thready buster. Oh my gosh, and I just missed a hit. <laughs> like, this is the thready buster again, and he has inhaled that. And I just dropped another one, like, I just had a hit before this guy came and smacked it. They're on, and they are coming through that. You can't really see what's coming through there, but. They're rolling through the sounder on a lovely edge, just full of weed. It's beautiful here, actually. Temps 24.9 degrees. What do you reckon? You. Swanny? <laughs> <sighs> Another angry, angry 65 model. Just caught one about five minutes ago. I'd say um, this is getting pretty fun. <laughs> oh, let's get a quick photo, eh? Let's get this guy back in. Good old barrack kick. Woohoo! Maybe they're just biting off like that point edge or something. It's like where your line is, is pretty much exactly where both of them are. Maybe let's just do like a five minute rotation on the spot. Like we all cast, but then like. But they're coming up on that side on the center as well. So they could be coming up and then coming in for a feed and then tucking out. <laughs> little update for you. What is it? It is a um, little update. 2.11. We haven't stayed just on this point. We've actually gone all the way down into, um, what do you call it? The bathtub right up top. There is fish in here, not as many as we saw when I actually hooked onto those two. So, wind direction's kind of changed. And now we're gonna head back to Ash's big barra spot. Suss out Birds Bay for a bit of a night fish and um, go from there, eh? See you soon, day one. We just finished up for the day. Actually, no, we haven't. We're actually, we're, we're, I've just, we're going back out. We're going back out for a night sesh. 
But let me give you the grand tour of the cabin. And I don't normally stay in a cabin, so let's have a look. Oh, so, plenty of room to park your boat. And you can run all your power cords from the cabin. But, man, I've just had a cheeky little beer on the deck here. And it's been lovely. Beer, some spaghetti. Overlooking the dam. There's Swanee there. And you come inside and like, look out, I don't know. I just, like, I'm used to camping. So this is really nice. And this brings me back to the memories of when I first came to Mondi. And you got your kitchen, shower there, bed. It's just lovely. Got your boat outside. I mean, I'm, it's just, it's a vibe. It is actually a really nice experience. Alrighty, we're heading out for the first night session, Saturday night. Just see the moon up there. Full moon's the 6th of May. It is the 29th of April, so about a week before that full moon hits. Let's see, we're gonna go hit up the birds back. I don't get that. Everyone's catching. It's good. Just a matter of time for us. What time did you catch your orders? Twelve something. You gotta try and get it. Um, I mean, it's probably not your fault, but less on the bottom, more on the top. Yep, on. Yes, say, hey, Swanee, you're the jackal. So good. I got it on GoPro. Hang on, Swanee, you have to try and steer it away. I'll get the net for you. Oh, Swanee. Ash, do you mind getting the net? Get it away from that Minkota, mate. Alright, rod tip down. Alright, bring her in, Swanny. That's it. Oh! Not away near that Minkota. Okay. Coming up. No, I can't see him. Can't see him. Jeez. Are you still snagged? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! All right, bring him in. Wind him up a couple times. Doesn't want to come in. Yes. There we go, Sonny. First barrel for the trip. Lovely. You're on the jackal. And Ashley snagged. All righty. Um, okay, I'm going to deal with this guy quick. Well, Swanee, how are you feeling, mate? Good, mate. First barrow in like three, four years. 64. Couple of big dogs, I believe, coming in on the inside here. Straight away, pretty much. He just took it.
Oh, yeah. oh my god, big. Keep the, oh, I've got to get my line out. No. It's all right. Keep the pressure out, that's all you need to do. Decent one. Keep trying to get him out of there if you can. If not, it's all good. <laughs> just let me just no it's fine <sighs> holy smoke you had to get that net Swanny. how's she feel make sure that pressure's on that rod there's always a bend a oh bit. little peewee 50 <laughs> it's tiny it's so little yeah maybe do a few clicks of the drag ash just go click 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 yep that's good that's heaps Jeez, hit that like a bloody freight train. Here we go, let's see if you guys can land this fish together. Rod tip a tiny bit lower now, Ash. And guide him in. Now we just watched the hot stuff up here. There we go, Ashley. Well done. <laughs> On the cool stuff. Yeah, <laughs> oh, the lure just came out too. Look at that. Boom. Lure's out. Same size again, hey. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> Woo. All right, Ash. How are you feeling? Woohoo. First barra. And you're kind of holding it too. I'm impressed. <laughs> So day two is finished, it's about eight o'clock. Um, we're having some, <laughs> something nice to eat, of course. Um, if it's not a stovetop pizza, it's a microwave meal. We know how to look after ourselves on these trips. Anyway, two jackal squirrels, these guys. So we all got on a fish. Three fish, four fish in total for the trip. Um, yeah, I'll speak a little bit more about the conditions and where we were and all the nitty gritty stuff at some stage, Probably towards the end of the video. Well, this is the end of the video. Well, I may as well sit in my boat and give you the tackle talk rundown. So, on the trip, I'm going to go through the lures I use, the rods I use, my sounder settings, um, what I take in the two um, boxes of tackle just there, and um, give you a rundown on what I think as well about Lake Modra and where I was going, what kind of spots I was thinking about before the trip based on the wind. And um, I'll even show you a rough plan that I came up, that I came up with the day before the trip. And um, yeah, it was kind of pieced together because it's a tough place to fish and it was actually very tough when we were there as well. As It's always tough. Like whenever you talk to anybody, it's always tough. The fishing is never amazing. So you got to work for it. Let's start with looking at the lures and the rods and reels. So, here we go. The one that I actually really like this trip, that's the 3D Buster. And the next one is the Reedy, I think it's like a seven inch plastic. Pink Eye Suji Jackal Squirrel in the 79. That worked really well. I think it's a size two and a size four hook. On the back, YS81s. The Zeric Live Mullet, that's a four and a half inch. I also tried the bigger size as well. Another Jackal Squirrel, I think that's the Wagasagi, it's like a gold, very similar to the bait that's actually in Lake Modern at the moment. Black and gold Daiwa Bait Junkie with a um, Barumba Lures, I think it's a 6 0 hook um, and a stinger attached to it. Zeric uh, Fish Trap. I did throw the Molex because it was similar to the Threaty Buster, but the action of this was way better. And less mucking around because you've got hooks coming out of it, fins coming out of this one. Anyway, don't get me started on that one. 
Threaty Buster was really, really good. I like the action that one. Black and Gold Jackal Squirrel, that yellow Jackal Squirrel, and then this one, Quarter Fish, but I had a spare one, so I just didn't worry about changing that hook out. Just got rid of it. And the Purple and White Bait Junkie here too on the same Brumbalua jig head. And the sort of setup I was running, and the reels, this one here is the Daiwa Soul bait caster on a blade and tails um, 10 to 40 pounds I find that a little bit too stiff but it's not too bad and then probably one of my favorite setups is the 4000 size TD Soul 3 on a Swamp Donkey TD Black they're 30 pound braid onto 80 pound leader I'll show you the leader in a minute Excella, Daiwa Excella, again on a TD don um, Swamp Donkey, 30 pound braid again. This is the 13 Concepts Concept Bait Caster running 20 pound. I actually quite like this rod. This is a Blade and Tails uh, 10 to 30 pound, 6 8, which is a nice rod. And then the new setup that I bought before the trip, I just threw an Excella on that again. It's a pretty cheap and it's Samaki Extreme. 701 what is that 701 smh and then a mangrove masher with a really cheap um sedona 3000 and i was actually running the thready buster and the reedy's plastic on the smaller reel size because i felt i could just get a nice consistent wind and the lure would actually work really really well and the rod that i had here was a Barra Raider. I really, really like these Barra Raiders for some reason. It's the 5 to 10 kilo, 6 foot 10, which is a nice, or 6.62, sorry. And now I'll run you through my sounder settings as well. My sounder settings, side imaging, menu, sensitivity was 2. My range out to left and right was 25 meters. Chart speed's always 10. And the color palette is number two. When I go to the enhanced settings here, I run my sensitivity at two, my contrast is at 13, sharpness off, contour mode off. And that is how I was getting a few of these shots, which I'll post up. Now the clarity does come and go. When I'm stationary, I get fine pictures. When I'm moving, I get fine pictures. I never ever have issues on those settings. And you can see the pictures there are actually pretty good. I take these two in the boat as well. I had some smaller lures, some smaller plastics. I wasn't sure if the barra were going to hit those, but I never ended up using them. And then in here, I run my um, Zero Glove mullets mostly. Um, and I've used all these colors before, and I've caught fish on most of these colors. My biggest barra I ever caught at Mondi was on this 5.5 inch Zero Glove mullet in that white color. And then the um, Berkeley, um, I forget what you call this, but man that is dynamite if there's plenty of fish around so that's where i keep those but mostly what i take is these two tubs and the leader i'm always rocking is the black magic 80 pound supple trace and the 50 pound i mix it up a little bit i haven't lost a barrel on those vibes all my hooks jackal squirrels the bigger ones with some surface and then all my other jackal squirrels here. And just have a quick look at the jackal squirrels. Just because they're, they're so easy to fish. Especially if you've got people who don't really fish that often. Um, I, haven't, I haven't tried this hot dog colour. It's got a rattle in it yet. But just black and golds, the pink ones. That's a Samaki red. I haven't really given that a red hot crack yet. Just, um, yeah, a few different ones in there. Plus the ones that I have out. Um, then in the next container here this is where i keep my plastics this was reedy's big plastic that actually has a nice action for its size gantier which i didn't throw but just a few different bait junkies different colors i'm not game enough to throw my lure boxes lure yet i'm just it's such a sensitive dam that you just kind of want to catch fish and when you catch fish you want to just make sure that you can land a few more before you start experimenting too much but yeah, just some bait junkies and a few other plastics in there, and extra molex. And that's pretty much all I take with me to the dam. Let's talk strategy and what I was thinking before I went to Lake Modron. So, 
it was blowing southeast and hard. Like I'm talking 40 k's an hour, 30 knots, 20 knots. And I got the map out like I normally do. And I'll kind of, if I can, I'll just put the map up here somewhere. And what I was what I was doing when I was looking at the map, I was kind of looking at all the southeasterly kind of points, like where the wind is pushing. So I look on Windy. So Windy's like an app you can choose. And Windy kind of shows you where the wind is pushing. But when you actually get to Lake Modron, because there's hills and the, the country is a little bit different, when you turn a corner, you think the wind's blowing, or it should be blowing this way based on Windy and the southeasterly. But the the way the land is sort of contoured and the, the shape of the hills, the wind blows differently. So it kind of adds another element into, hey, bloody hell, Monday's tough. Let's just make it a little bit harder. So when you get there, you kind of get a vibe for the spot as well. This is the plan I wrote down. It's rough, but you can kind of see it on the screen here somewhere. My first starting point, I think, is Ash's Big Barra Spot, which is um, kind of... I don't know how to explain it, but I can put on a map as well. And then you turn that corner. I wanted to check out where I caught my Big Barra. There was nothing there, nothing. Even though I thought the wind would be pushing into that spot, not a drop, no fish, nothing at all. So then we scoot off. I was going to go down B-Bay, but I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I followed the plan. Went to Insane Bay, went all the way down into Insane Bay, fished the lily pads, but just didn't see anything on the sounder, so that plan failed as well. So then I shot up towards the top from Insane Bay. I went straight up to Bathtub Point or Two Mile, and I fished a point there, and within a couple of casts, we got a fish, and then I got another fish, and then the next day we went back there and we caught two more fish, and it was just like, again, looking at the sounder and saying, this is where, not the sound of, and just looking at the map, looking at the wind and kind of thinking, this is where the barra should be. And they were when I got more up the top end of the dam, which I thought was the case because these barra have been pumped. Like it's a fairly well fished lake. And I think the reason why lots and lots of little barra are being caught is because they haven't been, you know, stung with those lures yet, or they're kind of not as shy to come out. Whereas these bigger barra, they've, they've probably been hooked a little bit. Maybe not all of them, but I don't know. You kind of, you just get a vibe of the place like it's it's been well fished. So let's think about a spot that isn't, like that, that probably wouldn't be fished as often as something that might be like 5k from the ramp. So this is about 15k up the river, up the lake. And there wasn't too many boats there, but to my surprise, there actually was quite a couple. Like there, there was about three or four boats fishing in the same area as me. Anyway, there were fish coming through, big fish, so that was a win. Bathtub point at the very top, um, and it definitely um, got me excited too because when we finished up fishing on 5, I think it was 5 p.m., we um, heard a report at about 6 p.m., that same area, that same spot, a guy caught a meter 20, um, which is good on him, like that's fantastic. It's really nice to hear those stories because you see him on the sand and you're like, bloody hell, like, it's nice to see on the sounder, but I wouldn't mind getting a photo with you. Um, so that's what I kind of thought, and those are the kind of spots that I was thinking this trip. I'm always, um, I'm always, I'm always thinking about Monday. I'm always thinking about the wind, and we had a wind change the following day, which didn't change my plan because, like, let's be honest, like the barra are going to sit in these spots for a few days after a wind change. They might just push across to the other side. Like, I'm not changing my plan dramatically to fish a completely different bay where the wind hasn't been for weeks. I'm gonna stay where I think the fish are and I'll catch them as they're moving through or whatever. But yeah, like my plan always worked, it never failed. I always found fish, I caught fish. I'm not a professional, I just do this recreationally. I just like going to Mondi. Um, and that's just how, how I like to do it, how I like to think about it. There's probably like a million other factors that I haven't really spoken about, but most of the time it's what lure you feel comfortable with. I like the jackal squirrel, it's super easy, it's light, you can cast it all day. The heavier plastics sort of take a toll on your wrists after a while, I find. And um, yeah, I mean, I could talk about Mondi all day. I could probably make a two hour video on Mondi. This is just a real short snippet of this trip. It's the 1st of May now. We fished, I think, six days before the full moon. Um, yeah. So if you have any questions or if you want like a very specific specific style of video let me know and i can try and make it otherwise yeah it's all i have to do for now thanks for watching and um i'll see you guys in the next tackle talk maybe in a year's time after i've found something else